thank you very much for inviting me to speak about the unity of African traditional religion. Hello and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi Ewanfo, and I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. To speak of the unity of African traditional religion seems to be a utopia in view of the present diversity of the trends of this religion. However, history teaches us that the unity of African traditional religion was a fact when one considers the ancient civilizations of Egypt, Nubia, and Sumer. Has these later belonged culturally to Africa? Moreover, though within the Egyptian culture there seems to be three different theologies, these varieties was perceived not as being contradictory but complementary. This implies that locally and globally. Religion, religious unity was a fact in ancient setting of African culture. This unity of ancient African civilizations can be demonstrated through comparative study by using the chemistic cosmological argument. The cosmo, a cosmological argument can be defined as an attempt to demonstrate the existence of God by starting from the existence of the cosmos. However, as used in Western theology and philosophy, this attempt has always been a failure. The Western cosmological argument happens to demonstrate the existence of a creator of this temporal universe, but is unable up to now to prove that this creator is the most high being. The failure of the West to demonstrate the existence of the most high is due to the wrong conception of his nature as a supreme being creator, a most high God who is the creator of the temporal realm cannot exist. This can be demonstrated by asking the following question. Where does creation occur? If creation occurs in God, thus he changes at the moment of creation because something in him goes from nothingness to existence. This naturally begs the question of the existence of the existence of a principle of the mutability of God. Now, such a principle must be greater than God, according to the law of causality. However, God is perceived to be the greatest possible being. So this is impossible. Maybe creation occurs outside of God. However, in this case, such a creation added to God will result in an entity greater than God. Greater, greater than the greatest possible being. This is also impossible. So you see, in both ways, the divinity has conceived in the West is a logical impossibility. A most high God who is at the same time the creator cannot exist. To prove the unity of religion in ancient African cultures, we use the chemistic cosmological argument. 
contrary to the failure of the cosmological argument has used in Western culture. The chemical cosmological argument proves the existence, proves the existence of a most high God who is different from the creator. And it extends into a systematic natural theology. This particular argument can be summarily introduced this way. The individual nature of our temporal universe has a collection of individual entities, makes of it the product of an individual cause. In the infinity of possibilities, the individuality of these calls implies the existence of other similar causes. Each of these different causes can be effective or potential, that is, having already or not having yet created its temporal universe. Under the hypothesis that every creation exists in its creator, a non-indispensable hypothesis introduced only for the sake of brevity, there is a being that includes the sum total of these potential and effective causes. This latter being is therefore the greatest possible being. He is thus the most high God. It follows that has the greatest possible being, the most high is absolutely immutable and indivisible. For a mutable and divisible God who require the existence of a principle of his mutability and divisibility. Now, according to the law of causality, which matches to an effect a cause anterior and adequate, this principle must be greater than God, that is, greater than the greatest possible being, which is impossible. Being indivisible and the greatest possible entity, the most high must be transcendent, that is, he is above all and doesn't know evil. Under the indivisibility, the indivisible nature of his being, a knowledge of evil will imply that God is infinitely good and infinitely bad, because consciousness and essence are one in the setting of his absolute indivisibility. So, being infinitely good and infinitely bad is an ontological impossibility. We have seen that each effective and potential creator expresses an individuality which is included in the Most High. Now, the Most High is indivisible. Thus, each creator, in other words, each child of God, expresses the wholeness of God in an individual manner. We call this wholeness the Logos. Thus, we have three celestial entities. God, the Most High, the Father, Mother, the Creators, or the Children of God, and the Logos. The Father, Mother, the Child of the Children of God, and the Logos. The indivisible nature of the Most High implies that there is a unity of the Father, Mother, the Child, and the Logos. They are one in existence, in substance, and in activity. This solar trinity, this is solar trinity, it can be illustrated this way. If one is in front of a mirror, 
the power of the reflection of the mirror and the image in the said mirror form along with him a trinity. When he moves, his image moves also, thanks to the power of the reflection of the mirror. Now the Logos is the power of the reflection of the wholeness of God in the child of God. A question arises here. Where does creation occurs in relation to the Most High? We know that by hypothesis, creation occurs in the Creator. But the question here is now, where does it occur in relation to God the Most High? Creation cannot happen in the Most High due to his absolute immutability. And creation cannot happen also outside of God. Otherwise, added to the Most High, it will result in an entity greater than God, greater than the greatest possible being. However, we know that all reality is in God and that by hypothesis, creation occurs in the creator. It thus follows that creation is only a limited perception of the celestial reality in the temporal consciousness of the creator. The, the visible is only an appearance of the invisible. In other words, <clears throat> reality is spiritual, never material. And this is a conclusion drawn from the Timothy cosmological argument. This argument can be extended to include the essential doctrine of a salvational religion the solar religion. Thus, the chemical cosmological argument is a natural systematic theology. From the chemical cosmological argument, we have learned the existence of a most high God, the father and mother, two, potential and effective creators, three, a creator of all this temporal universe, and for the logos or the manifestation of the wholeness of God in each of his children. And five, we have learned the existence of solar trinity or the unity of God, the creator, and the logos in existence, in substance, and in activity. Six, the transcendence of the Most High God. And seven, we have learned the apparent nature of the visible universe, reality being spiritual and not material. All these seven features define the religion of ancient Egypt, as well as that of Sumer. According to the theology of Memphis, the Most High God is called the Soul Lord in the pyramid text, and the One Lord in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. You agree with me that Soul Lord and One Lord will mean the same thing. And these Theism includes lower manifestation of the Most High that are the Creator, who is called Aton, the Logos, called Ta, and the dead God or divinized ancestors. While in Sumer, the Most High is called Enlil, the Creator is called Enkai, and Enlil. Please, the, the Most High is called Anu, Anu or An. And the Creator and Kai and Enlil is the Logos. 
and there are also dead gods like in Egypt or ancest divinized ancestors. So we see it is the same theism that we have deduced from the Kemeti cosmological arguments. So in both religions, the Most High is transcendent. In Egypt, like in Sumer, prayers were never directly addressed to the Most High God due to his transcendence. The Creator operated thanks to the assistance of the Logos, symbolized by the breath, the word. Thus, both religions include the very same notion of theism as hierarchical monotheism a concept of theism where the supreme being thrones above lower divinities that are but his manifestations. This is not polytheism because polytheism implies many independent gods, but here we have one supreme the, the, uh, being and lower divinities that are his manifestation. So this is not polytheism, but it is rather hierarchical monotheism. Moreover, the immortality of the, of the soul results in the fact that reality belongs to the realm of the invisible in ancient Egypt, like in Sumer. Now, the theology of Memphis is known thanks to the Shabaker stone, a stone kept in the British Museum and saved by the Nubian pharaoh Shabaker. Uh, the reason that led this pharaoh to the preservation of this is that His Majesty found it to be a work of the ancestors which was were eaten and so that it could not be understood from the beginning to the end. The very fact that the Nubian king called these inscriptions the teachings of his ancestors proves the Nubian and the Egyptian share the very same religion. Thus is established the unity of religion in ancient African cultures. This, this unity of religion in ancient African cultures is indicative of the possibility of the unity of African traditional in the modern setting in which we live. Three facts justify this hope that we can arrive to the unity of African traditional religion. The first thing is that every statement of the Kemeti cosmological argument is drawn deductively from the previous one. Therefore, they cannot contradict each other. They are coherent. Being a set of deductive and coherent statements, the Kemeti cosmological argument is like geometry, Euclidean geometry, an exact science. So African traditional religion in its original trend, which trend was the one, the one used in ancient Egypt, was an exact science. Now, science is universal. It transcends ethnic limitations. Second thing, the Kemeti cosmological argument can be shown to be congruent with Bukongo, the Congo religion. So that religion has kept the essential of the religion of ancient Egypt. This can be seen in the fact that the Bukongo, the Bukongo, the Congo religion includes a transcendent most high God, Zambi Ampungu Tulendo, a creator of the temporal universe, Bumba Loa. And this expression Loa 
must is must must, uh, must lead people to remember Haitian Vodou where there are also loas. And we have also the logos, which is called Pinanza. And the logos within a worldview where the visible is perceived has an appearance of the visible. That the Bukongo is the perfect continuity of the religion of ancient Egypt. It is therefore like the chemical cosmological argument of an exact science. To this theological congruence of the Bukongo and the religion of ancient Egypt must be added the same organization of the mystery schools, which includes or which included a school of the great mystery, the divine mystery, which is called in Congo culture, the Kimpasi, and the school of human mysteries in which, which included a civil mystery academy epitomized in Congo by the Lemba and a martial initiatory academy which is in Congo culture, the King Kimba. Now, the southward migration of black ethnics from the confines of the Nile implies that the Kemeti cosmological argument depicts the original form of African traditional religion. Therefore, all the trends of African traditional religion can be explained from the Kemeti cosmological argument or from the Bukongo, its continuity. The convergence of the Bukongo and the religion of the other Bantu, Bantu ethnics is easily established as they include the notion of the hierarchical monotheism. <clears throat> Let us give some example of the explanation of West African or of diasporan trend of African traditional religion from the Congo, which, which depicts the possibility of the unity of African traditional religions. The voodoo of Benin can be explained as the mingling of the three distinct initiatory schools of the Congo, the divine, the civil, and the martial, because the voodoo of Benin includes the divine sacerdotal function, which is the function of Kipasi, the healing function, which is one of the functions find, found in the Lemba, and the martial function, which is the function of the Kinkiba. The other element of difference is that though witchcraft is one of the possible weapon of war when it comes to the destruction of the enemy, these use must be, like in Bukongo, an exception, not the rule. This implies that witchcraft must not be used as an element of retaliation in the society. In the defense against the attack of witchcraft, the Bukongo recommends the use of warning called loco. This consists in asking the gods or the holy ancestors to open the eyes of the so-called witch, that he may know that the evil he does to the others react against himself, and that his sins lead to death. So he requests his way of his, his bewitching. The first example, the contribution of the Congo people to the development of the Haitian voodoo is less documented. In fact, 
this trend of African traditional religion draw its hierarchy of divinity from the Congo, the Congo religion. This is seen in this fact. First point, the transcendence of the most high God called Bon Dieu in Haitian voodoo and called Nzambia Pungutulendo in Congo culture. In both cases, prayers are not directly addressed to him due to his transcendence. Second, the existence of Loas in Haitian voodoo recalls recalls the exist the existence of Loa, whose plural in Kikongo is Baloa, meaning the sun, the stars. This is explained, they are explained in Bukongo as being effective, effective creators in the multiverse. We know that our universe is not the only one. There are other parallel universes which, which imply the existence of other creators. So all these effective creators are called, the, each, each one is called Loa in Congo, like in Haitian Voru. The, so the third thing is the existence of the twin Marasa in Haitian Voru. Marasa is the Haitian rendition of Mapasa in Congo. In Congo, Mapasa means twin. In Bukongo, the divinity that comes after the creator is the Logos, Pinanza. Now, Pinanza is the fullness of God manifested in every child of God. This fullness is epitomized at the unity of the male and the female. Thus, the male, fe the male female unity of the Marasa queen is expressive of the Logos, the Christ of Christianity, exactly as in the Congo religion. So we have the same notion of the Logos. The third example is the explanation is the, is the unity of the religion of the Higbo of Nigeria and the Congo religion. The religion of the Higbos of Nigeria is based on the notion of the Chi. Now the Chi is understood as meaning both spirits and power. The greatest Chi is the most high God, Chuku or Chihuku. A con the contraction of Chihuku gives Chuku, the most high God, while the creator is Chineke. His spirit, the Chi, is present in every person. Now, this notion of the Chi is a key to the Congo notion of Nkisi. The Nkisi means power and spirit, exactly like the Chi. The Nkisi, the highest Nkisi, is the most high God, Dambi Ampungu Tulendo. Now, Mpungu and Nkisi are synonymous, and Mpungu to Lendo means the Nkisi which, which has all authority, the Chi, which is supreme, has spirits. The Bakisi, which is the plural of Nkisi, has spirits, are present in every person like the chi is present also in every person. Religion is thus defined in Congo culture as the use of the divine spirits, the Mbakisi, to deep in order to develop one di one's divine power. So it is the use of the chi as divine spirits to develop the chi as divine power. So, 
these the demonstrated scientific nature of African traditional religion has seen in original Egyptian trend. Egyptian trend and in its continuity has the Bukongo is a hope that the spiritual unity of Africa is a feasible notion. And we have seen that, we have seen that we can work the unity of Bukongo and the Vodou of Benin and the Vodou of Haiti and the religion of the Hibos. This conviction relies on the fact that all the trends of African traditional religion can be explained thanks to the Bukongo as a devolution of a scientific epistemic toward a system of beliefs. Thus, the discovery that in its true nature, the, Archie, the African traditional religion is an exact science is the hope of a possible move toward the unity of African traditional religion. Thank you so much, sir. This has really been very rich as a, as a lecture. This is a lecture and a very important one. All right, <clears throat> we're going to break it down. I can guarantee you that it's going to be a long conversation, this particular one. <laughs> yeah, okay. But how we started, in case we're not able to finish it today, of course, we're going to come back to it again next time because we are here. We are fully ready for the conversation. This is why we are here. Uh, but let's start from the basis. Help us to understand you a little bit better. Where are you from? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? We usually take it from there because we're interested in the connection. I was born in Kinshasa, I, and I grew up as a Protestant from the, from the Baptist Church. My father and my mother belonged to the ba Baptist Church. So I joined the Baptist Church at age 10, and I left it at age 13, and I began to read various books to find my own way, and eventually I came across the Christian Science Church. So I, so I joined the Christian Science Church, where eventually I became a Christian Science teacher and a Christian Science lecturer. But later on, I began making research in order to understand how to help my people fight witchcraft. And that research led me eventually to write a book on witchcraft, on handling witchcraft, on, but also to write a philosophy of my own. And upon writing this, someone urged me to do theological studies. And that's where I went into a seminary and by an online study, I made doctoral studies in India. And so for the time being, I'm a doctor in theology, in apologetics. And I left the Christian Science Church in order to begin spreading the good news of the scientific nature of the religion of my ancestors. Bobo Congo, the African traditional religion is general, is actually an exact science. That, that is how I grew to this understanding. I had a book from Fukiao. So I was reading that book in order to understand the con how what was the essential doctrine of the Congo religion when I realized that the essential doctrine of the Congo religion is that man is really divine. But due to sin, that divinity, divinity is potential. So through purification, must, man will recover, the human being will be, recover the expression of his divinity. That divinity which is in, in the human being 
is called the Lagos Kimalungila in the temporal realm, Pinanda in the divine realm. Now, this is the same schema which is found in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. The Osiris Ani, who is called Osiris, claims the right to be a Osiris, which means that he was a Osiris potentially because he, he has lived a life of purity. He claims now the right to be a Osiris in a manifest way. So it is the same schema. And this is also the same schema which was used in primitive Christianity, the true Christianity, not the false Christianity that was brought by the white people. In the true Christianity, in, in the first epistle of John, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, it is said that we are ch ch children of God, and what we shall be has not yet been manifested. Now, what we shall be is what we are, the children of God. So we are so now in a potential way, and we shall be so in a manifest way. And the, um, the means for us to recover that manifest expression is purity. So it is essentially the same religion. So that's, what, that's how I grew in the practice of religion. All right. Thank you so much for that. Now, after you leave the, the Baptist church, uh, you, you leave the, uh, the, the conventional Christian doctrine that we have today and begin to research about uh, the African spirituality. Uh, what did you find among the people, other than maybe the documentation, the writings that may have been coming from outside? Let me understand that. Yes, I do understand. First of all, since my childhood, since since year eleven, I got in touch with the world of Fukiao. Fukiao Kabun Fukiao is now is later has been known as Kibambwende Kabunteke Fukiao. Formerly, he was Andre Fukiao. So he wrote a book about the, 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 the Congo word view. Fukiao was the person who got in touch with the last initiates of the Lemba. The Lemba is the Congo Civil Academy of, um, uh, of, civil, of uh, civil Academy of Mystery Teaching. So Fukiao got in touch with the last initiate of the Lemba and he wrote what he got from them in that book, which is the Cosmo, uh, which is uh, Le Mukongo et le monde qui l'entoure. The Mukongo, the Congo people and the world that surrounds him. So that was my first contact with that, with African traditional religion. Of course, I used to go to the village. Was I was seeing also people practice both the Christian religion and the traditional religion. I did talk also with some people, some initiates, and later on, later later, I made that discovery that the essential teaching of primitive Christianity is the same with the essential teaching of the of the Congo of the African traditional religion. So those are the tools that I used in order to advance in this knowledge. I want you to help me explain what is meant by even religion itself and what is it meant by African traditional religion. If there is any difference between the two. What is meant by African traditional religion? I will give you the, 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 the meaning has understood by, by my ancestors. In the 15th century, the Portuguese reached the, Congo, the mouth of the Congo River, and their first intent was to introduce their religion to the, to the Congo people. Now, due to the difficulty of, of communication, the 
they, they, they spoke about religion and the black people had to translate in their perception what is meant that by religion. So they came with this definition. They said, what you call religion is what we call Nkisi Now remember, I spoke about the Chi of the Igbo and the Nkisi. Nkisi Nti means local Nkisi. Now the word Nkisi means spirits and it means power. So what they mean is that religion for them is the use of the divine spirits in order to develop the divine power which is latent in every human being. So that's the definition of religion. The use of the divine spirits in order to develop presence of, of the fullness of God, which is potential in each one of us. In your long explanation, I was having a lot of thoughts. Uh, one of them I was thinking is that um, uh, to somebody who have gone to, uh, to the Christian uh, faith today, they will have the impression that God is actually, apart from the Father, this God we are talking about is somewhere in the sky, he is also a man. Uh, this man is most probably a white man. Not really probably, absolutely a white man. He looked like the European, somebody coming from France, from Germany, or from Italy. That is the image, at least that is the refiguration that the Vatican has presented to the world. And that is what the people know of God. Uh, of course, by, even by looking at it like that, it looks very contradictory that uh, many Africans say we are made in the image of God because the God we are talking about now appears to be completely different from you, his skin color, no? at least. From your understanding of African traditional religion or spirituality, I don't know if we can use both interchangeably, is the God we are talking about actually, this supreme God, a man in the sky? What do you want to say about that? From the start, the first thing I did was to show that the concept of God as entertained in the West is a wrong one. It's a logical impossibility. The supreme being is conceived by, by, by the Christian Western Church as being at the same time the creator. A supreme being who is at the same time the creator is, an, is a logical impossibility because either creation happens in him, in which case he changes. But if God change, then there must be a principle of his immutability which must be greater than him, which is not possible. Or maybe... Creation must happen, happen outside of him. But if creation happens outside of God, then that creation added to God will form an entity greater than God. So in both ways, it doesn't work. Western scholars knows, they know this. They know that the concept of the supreme being creator is an impossible one. So when I'm speaking of God, I'm not speaking of the God has conceived in the West, that is the supreme being creator. The Kemetic cosmological argument proves the existence of the most high God who is different from the creator. And that most high God in Bukongo is called Zambi Amfungu. To Lendo. He is transcendent. That doesn't mean that he is, he, he is above the physical sky. No, he is everywhere. He is omnipresent. Trans, his transcendence means that he includes no limitation. He is cognizant of no evil. So we are the image of that God through 
the creator. The creator made us in his image. We are in the image of Mumba Loa, the God creator, because God, the Most High, is transcendent. He did not, he did not create the temporal realm. The temporal realm is the work of one of his children, which who is the solar creator, Mumba Loa. So when we speak, of, when we speak about the Most High, we doesn't do it in connection with the Western perception, which is that the Most High is who is confused with the Creator. In ancient Egypt, in Sumer, in Bukongo, the distinction is made between the Most High God who is transcendent and the Creator. And we are in the image of the Creator. Let me add something. In Sumer, it was thought that God created human being in his image, but they stressed that they were, they were black heads. They called those human beings black heads. Now, if you translate that expression black head in Lingala, a local language in Kinshasa, it gives you ex exactly this expression, a black man. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, I want, I want to first of all ask you about the mystery, the mystery school. Yes. Um, because you did make mention of that. I don't know if you were referring to Asian Kermit or in, in, uh, in Congo. But I want you to explain to us um, what, what exactly is mystery school for those who don't understand it and how is it connected to religion? Yes. There are many kind of initiation. There are many kind of initiation. When I speak of initiation, I don't I don't speak of later initiation such such as the use for the passage for changing of the age or for winning winning a, a baby or at uh, when 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 someone want to marry in though in all those occasions either in healing there is an initiation but i'm not speaking of this i'm speaking of the highest initiation that were used in ancient egypt and in congo setting i can speak of them as the university the traditional african universities so there were three kinds of initiation the divine initiation, which was the school of the prophets, the sacerdotal initiation in that setting was trained the, 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 the high priest and all the other prophets. So that was the highest, the highest initiation. Now that initiation was kept sacred by the Egyptian so that None of, of the Greek students who went into Egypt had learned that, that initiation. They didn't, they didn't accept them in that initiation because it was a secret of the black people. So aside that divine initiation, there was also the human initiation, the, the civil initiation which is part of the human. In the human, you have the civil and the martial initiation. The civil initiation included the school of law, school of medicine, school of trade, school of governance, etc. So if we can, if we can call the, uh, the, 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 the divine mystery has the school of theology, the University of Theology, Theological University, this one was the human university. And the Lemba included, as I said, the School of Law, the School of Medicine, etc., etc. And aside from the civil mystery, there was also the Marshall University, which was like a military academy. People African people used to train people how to war, how to make war. 
we had military academies in Africa. In Benin, the voodoo of Benin is essentially a martial initiation. But in Benin, you have the three initiation combined. But in Wukongo, in the Congo setting, the three are divided as they were in Egypt. So those are the schools I'm speaking about. Thank you for that. That is very important. Now, because we are uh, looking at the unification of African, um, African traditional system, I'm trying to see how we connect. Of course, you already made a connection to the Igbo uh, who have uh, Chi. Uh, of course, I know that if we break it down, we're going to find a lot of other people inside you know, in their explanation. Because I know we didn't talk about the, the Benin, you know? um, didn't talk about the Yoruba or many other uh, people in Africa. I know if we break it down, we are still going to find something that unites uh, most of us. But what I'm uh, trying to understand now is that at the time you were talking of this mystery school uh, amongst Asian Kermit, is it something that was happening only among them? Or is it something that happened all across the continent? I'm trying to see what is the connecting line as of the time. Because this time, of course, we are not asking the Europeans to explain to us. We are looking at our history. So how do, what do we know about this connection among us in the time of Asian Kermit? We, we, first of all, I established the fact that there were a unity, a, a spiritual unity in the ancient setting of, uh, in the setting of the ancient civilization of Africa. They spoke the same language. They included the same religion. They were not the diversity we see nowadays. So the, the African traditional religion was only one. Now, the good thing is that that religion was an exact science. Now, what we have now has the different trends. So African traditional religion are beliefs. So they are, the, 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 their scientific nature has been kind of lost. Now, we know that we migrated from the, from the confine of Egypt downward. And because we migrated downward, there have been some elements that brought the, the, the devolution or the loss of the scientific nature of most of the trend of the African traditional, traditional religion. Those elements, among those elements, I can, I, can, I can say this one. First of all, there is the intrusion of the Western thinking through the Arabs and through the Greeks and the Romans, through their intrusion, they brought the Western concept of God, which actually they took from Akhenaton. So they took the wrong concept of God that was devised by Akhenaton as being the, the true concept of God which is the concept of the most high God as being at the same time the creator. And we have proved that that concept is wrong. So by trying to impeach on the African that that is the true concept, it, resu it resulted in, in, the, in the loss of the scientific nature of that religion. Let me give you an example. We have the Luba people in Congo. If you ask those people, who is God the Most High, they will tell you it is Mvedi Mukulu. Now, the word Mvedi Mukulu literally means the oldest ancestor. So it is not the Most High God. The fact is, when the white people came, they asked the, the Luba people, who do you worship? And the way they said, we worship Bidi Mukulu, which, is, which means that we direct our prayer through our highest ancestor to the Most High God. And the, and, the, and the white people who didn't understand that, they said, okay, then Bidi Mukulu is your Most High God. So they blemished 
the religion of the Luba people. So these schema happen everywhere in Africa. The other thing is that within the setting of ancient civilization, the three schools were divided. You have the school, the martial initiation, the civil initiation, and the divine initiation. But event, the eventually, and, the, and in that setting, Egypt was the bastion of the divine mystery. Sumer was the, was the field of the, the civil mystery. And the Nubia, Egypt, Nubia, Ethiopia was the sphere of the martial initiation. So that's in, in, in the ancient time, they, they, oh, they three were together, but with the divine mystery being the superior one. So where, what we see, for example, in Western Africa, in, in, in the, the Voodoo, for example, is that, or among the, Aka, the Akan of Ghana, is that the three are mingled in one initiation, which also is something that, 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 that must be known. And the other thing is that when we arrived around the year 1930, the, the anthropologists in Europe, they told the politician that if we have, if we want to dominate Africa, we must destroy the initiatory schools. So the initiatory schools, which were the guardian of our spirituality were destroyed in nine, during the year 1930. So with the disappearance of those initiatory schools, the African people, most, more of them now, those doesn't anymore know the hierarchy of the divinities of their culture. Sometimes they confuse them and sometimes they also together, also together forget them, and they remain. They re, they retain the, the the concept of theism that was brought by the white people. So you see, all these shows that it is possible for us to work the things by starting from the chemical cosmological argument, which is the original scientific nature. Of our religion, of our religion. So all the trends of African traditional religion can be explained from their scientific original nature. At the time uh, that you, we were referring, because I was looking, I was trying to understand if in Africa we were practicing the same religion, uh, the same language. Is that correct? No, we didn't practice the same language, but the same religion. Sumer and uh, the, the Sumer and uh, Egypt didn't have the same language, the same scriptures, but the same religion. In my book titled Bukongo, I demonstrate that the religion of, of Sumer, the religion of Egypt, and the religion of Congo are the same. And, and I use comparative study in order to prove this. So, so I didn't say that they have the same language, but the same religion, the same theology. You're right. Thank the you same for... theology. But the stress is not always the same because the stress in Egypt is a divine stress, but the stress in Sumer is a human one. This I prove in my book, Congo, but it is the same religion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That is even very important now. Yeah, I really appreciate that you made those clarifications. Um, why is it that all across Africa, they were practicing the same uh, form of religion. I mean, was there a kind of um, a system of unification where all the people have a point of uh, of contact? I don't know. Maybe at the end of the year, all of them come together uh, to worship at the same place or to keep setting code so that it become always the same. Or is it because they all came from the same place? Okay, I understand now that all human beings are coming from the same family. But, okay, this has been happening for several thousands of years. Sometimes we lost count of uh, certain things. So I'm trying to understand, 
Is it that this religion was preached to some people and they, they converted, or is it because this group of people have been living together in the same place, they all know this religion, but at the point, they move to a different part, so even though their language changed, they still keep their religion. Is that the explanation? Can you please say something about that? I will say that religion is a revelation. From the start, when, when Bumbalo was the creator, created man, they had a clear connection with the divine. And because they had a clear connection with the divine, then they had a clear revelation of what religion is. I mean, their religion was a scientific one because within the setting of a clear connection with the divine, they will have the clearest idea of the unity of God and man. And that clear idea of God was the, the one that Howard, Howard and Seto had in the start, in the start. And that is also the one ancient Egypt had. Because ancient Egypt did rely on revelation, while nowadays Europe relies mostly on the head, not on mostly on revelation. So this explains the, the, the original unity, spiritual unity. Now, due to me now. There is migration, but before migration, I must, I must stress something here that I must stress something here that spirituality can be lived at two levels at the divine level or at the human level. We exclude the demonic level because the demonic was a deviation from true religion. So I, I say that religion can be lived at the divine level or at the human level. What I mean the divine level is that is the one where purification is the key to the manifestation of the divine power. At the human level, human means can be used for the elevation. I, I, may, I may give you an example. Because I said that primitive Christianity is akin to African traditional religion in, in our original schema. Now in the Bible, in the Bible, Jesus said, blessed are the pure in high for they shall see God. It means that through purity, man can develop his spiritual senses, his spiritual sight. Now, if you take the beauty of Gabon, there is a cult there called beauty, a trend of African traditional religion. In order for one to develop, to develop his sight, his spiritual sight, he can use a, 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 a plant called iboga. By eating the iboga, they make a kind of mental tree. So you see, this is a human way of rising. And I'm, we have to make that distinction. There is a human's divine practice of uh, African tradition religion that there are also human practices. Now, how our aim is that the human must be must arise to the divine so that's also the schema that uh, that must be kept so the diversity is due to the different kind of both kind of practices then brings diversity but also different kind of migration different kind of migration but also different kind of uh, specificity of the nation. If you take the Berlin nation, it was a nation based on a, a, a civilization or an organization based on martial 
martial initiation while the Congo kingdom was based was based on the divine mystery so that when Zinganku created that kingdom he was obliged to cooperate with the high priest because the high priest is the number one spiritually speaking i hope that that answer your question it does it does uh we're, we're talking of something that is highly uh deep here yeah, very deep it's not something that it's just uh, very simple to understand <laughs> there so if i'm asking you too many questions you are going to have to pardon me anyway this is what i do here i ask yes, questions thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this god that we're talking about because we're talking about spirituality talking about religion is it like energy that we are all tapping into everyone is tapping into it and um depending on our, on our level of understanding we can benefit from how we connect to him uh i don't know if you can say anything about that i'm just trying to imagine some some things if it is like energy i'll say yes but i i avoid using those physical terms like energy vibration etc i prefer to speak about the logos which is the manifestation of the divinity in you and me in all of us that is a power you can call it energy I, mean, I, 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 don't, uh, I, I, I don't disagree. It can be called energy, but the spiritual term, the, birth, the best term is divine power. Divine power, which is acting in each one of us. But it doesn't, it doesn't trample on our free will. So, the ancestors, the holy ancestors, don't force that spiritual power on you. They respect your free will. So man has to, the human being has to access to that through purification. Mm -hmm. I remember you were, uh, when you were talking before, uh, you did mention of the fact that God has no... Um, cognizance of evil. I, I want you to re-explain that part very well. Is it that God does not know evil or does not do evil or does not, um, does not uh, approve of evil? Uh, I want you to explain that part. Uh, I think somebody wants to understand that better. Yes, yes. I was speaking about the most high. I'm speaking about the most high. And we i demonstrated that the most high is ind absolutely indivisible if god were divisible there then there must be a principle of his divisibility if the most high were divisible there must be a principle of that of his divisibility and that principle must be greater than god which is greater than the greatest possible being. This is impossible. So God is absolutely indivisible. If God, because God is absolutely indivisible, this implies that consciousness and essence are the same to, to him. What he knows is what he is. So if God knows evil, he will be evil. If God knew evil, he will be infinitely good and infinitely bad, which is an, ontolo an ontological impossibility. So the most high God is not cognizant of evil. But lower, lower being, lower divinity, for lower divinity, evil exists. It exists only potentially. Why evil should exist? Evil should exist potentially in order for man to have a free will. Now God has endowed you and me or his children in heaven 
with free will. Free will means free choice. So free choice implies that evil is potentially there. But God, the Most High, is not cognizant of that evil. Why? Because in the African ontology, potential existence is not true existence. True existence is a manifest existence. So creation doesn't bring something to go from nothingness to existence as in Europe, in Western culture, no. Creation doesn't mean going from nothingness to somethingness, no. Creation in Africa means going from potential existence to manifest existence, which means that that's, that's why the creator is represented as an architect, has, has uh, a potter, or has a blacksmith, in all these cases, the matter, the initial matter is there, and the potter only gives a fall to that matter. So creation consists in helping something go from potential state to manifest state. So in that schema, evil potentially existed because man had to have a free will. But the most high God is not cognizant of evil. And that's why in the true African religion, prayer were never addressed to the most high God. In the Haitian Vodou, the, most, the highest God to whom prayer are addressed are the Loas. And I have shown you that the Loas are only the creators of the the potential creator of the different universes in the multiverse. Uh, actually, I would have liked you to use another word of instead of cognizance, uh, so that we can uh, get that part better. Uh, God uh, is not cognizant of if, evil. If I, I want to use to another use, word there. If I have to use to use another word, I will say this: God, the Most High, cannot know evil because. He is indivisible, and since he is indivisible, to know for him is to be. To know and to be are the same and one thing, because he is indivisible. So what he knows is also what he is. So if he knows evil, he will be at the same time good and evil, infinitely yeah. good and infinitely evil, which is impossible. That's why God doesn't know, the most high God doesn't know evil. And that's why prayer cannot uh, be addressed to him. Prayer are addressed to lesser divinity. Prayer are addressed to how divine, uh, you, uh, how holy ancestors, and they direct them to higher divinities. All right, that is, that is very important uh, there. <clears throat> I needed that clarification. Uh, now, what is evil evil? I want you to explain that. The cosmological argument has proved to us that God is the sum total of reality. And God expresses his holiness in each of his children. And we have seen that that's important. By giving an individuality to each of his children, God is setting order. So there is infinite all order in heaven. Order, life, love are synonyms of good. And God is, the, therefore, God is good. So evil is whatever is not in line with the nature of God as infinite love, infinite truth, infinite good. Evil is what goes against man's manifestation of the divinity which is in him. Evil is what keeps the divinity of man 
to be potential rather than manifest. Evil is whatever impedes you and me to express our divinity. All right. I want to just spend some few more words explaining the concept of duality in that what if we eliminate evil with the idea of God, the concept of God still make any sense? Let's pretend that evil no longer exists. What we know about God, are we still going to keep those as our understanding of God? When I, when I, uh, I demonstrated the existence of God, I started by the existence of individuality. From the existence of individuality, I proved the individual, the existence of an order, which is perfect, which is good, and that and that and I and I proved that God includes only that order, and there is nothing outside of that order. So in that order, evil doesn't exist, but from from. The lower point of view, it will exist only potentially. But we have seen that potential exist, existence is not true existence. So evil, what will happen with if, 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 if evil didn't exist? Let me first, first mention this. In Congo culture, the David now doesn't exist. And I know that it's not only in Congo culture. In fact, in ancient Egypt, the notion of a Satan didn't exist. The notion of Satan was a notion developed in Persia. And the Jews took that, per that notion from Persia after they had been delivered from the slavery of Babylon by the Persia. So in Africa, the devil has a, a has a, a a being doesn't exist in Congo, in Congo religion. The devil is called Nkadi Ampeba. Now Nkadi Ampeba is not a being; it it is an attitude. It means the fact of despising light, despising the truth, despising love, despising divine order. Nkadi Mpemba. Mpemba is water, has the word of the ancestor. Nkadi means that which is bitter. So, so Nkadi Mpemba would mean to be bitter, that to be against the celestial or the divine order. Now you have almost the same among the Igbo. Among the Igbo, the devil is called a Kwensu. Now a Kwensu is a contraction of a que and su, which means if you believe it happens to you, which proves that the devil is not a being but an attitude. That is very good. That is very interesting now. <laughs> 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 All right. Now I want you to speak to this uh, to this scenario. Um ele electricity, let's take it. Yes. It is not good. It is not bad. If you apply it correctly, it is good. But if you apply it wrongly, it is bad. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. If you go to the current, maybe where uh, you plug your hand to the negative and positive, you are going to burn to, to ashes mm. because it's going to act on you. But if you connect the same to a light bulb, you are going to get light. Yeah. So is it... Okay, another way can be uh, the salt that we use, because all of us use salt in the house. If you put the appropriate amount on your food and you eat, it will be very sweet. But if you put too much quantity of it in a food and you eat, or maybe, for example, you just pour salt in water and drink, you are going to die almost instantly. Yeah. So the salt is not good or bad. It is what you do with it. Is it in this sense we are looking at God, we are looking at the energy, or is different from that? I'm just thinking aloud. No, it is different from that. In the celestial level, all is good. 
But remember, we say that the temporal level is only a limited perception of the celestial level. So that limited perception brings in the notion of limitation or the notion of reversion of good, which is the notion of evil. Evil is brought by a wrong perception. Evil is that a wrong perception of the celestial realm. Let me give you an example. When we look at the plane in the sky, it looks very small. And someone who doesn't have the experience of planes can tell you that it is a bird. But actually, those who have been in a plane, they tell you, no, it is not a bird. It is a plane and it is very big. There are about 100 person in it. So the smallness of the bird, of the, of the, of the plane is an illusion introduced by the distance. So also, the evil we seem to, 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 to see here is an inversion perception brought by the distance be between the divine and the human. The more we advance toward the divine, the less evil there will be. Up to the moment, the evil will disappear totally from our existence. All right. Uh, but the evil itself, is it really necessary for it to exist? This art of imperfection, if we put it like that. Because now, I want to believe that according to your explanation, of course, according to uh, the spiritual interpretation that we might have here, that the Supreme Be actually have all the power, they can do anything or everything. If we agreed on that, does for for that supreme be is it for its own good that evil exists so that people can maybe look at the evil and then turn to him or turn to it does this entity need evil to exist if it doesn't need evil does does the entity have the power to eliminate the evil from equation if evil is eliminated from the equation what are we going to have Yes, let, let me start from the chemical cosmological argument. That chemical, the chemical cosmological argument brought us to the point that we have realized that the supreme being includes his children. And though the, every child of God expresses the wholeness of God in him, now, because God manifests his wholeness in the child of God, this is an expression of affection. And because God expresses an infinite affection to an infinite number of children, he must be this, this must be supreme love. Therefore, we have established that God is love with capital L. That is principle of love. Now, we have seen also that the Most High is absolutely immutable. Because he is as absolutely immutable, he doesn't change. And because he doesn't change, he cannot take away the logos from you and me. He cannot take away the logos from you and me. This means that. God is eternally loyal to the child. Now, because God expresses a quality of truth, which is loyalty, and he expresses this quality infinitely to an infinite number of children, he must be truth with capital T. So we have proved through the chemical cosmological argument that God is love, and God is truth. And because God is love and God is truth, it means that his love for you and me, his love for his children is a true love. Now, a true love cannot be forced. A true love means that 
the children of God are endowed with free will. That is established by the Kemetic cosmological argument. Because God is truth, because God is love, then the children of God are endowed with free will. Now, free will implies a choice, implies a choice. But we know that evil cannot be present in the divine real. But the choice must be there, which implies that potentially evil exists. And but from the point of view of the most high, evil doesn't exist, even potentially. From the point of view of the children of God, evil exists, which is he has a free choice, but that existence is only a potential one. So, the who is responsible for evil? It is the one who makes evil goals from potentiality to manifest existence. That is, Ma, the, 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 the sinning man is responsible from evil because God doesn't eat, the Most High doesn't even see that evil. So the one who made evil go from potentiality to a manifest existence is the responsible one. That is the first point. Now, the second point is that God is not, God doesn't not see evil. You cannot ask him that he has the power to quench evil. He doesn't see that evil. The one who created the evil, that is the human being, is the responsible. And the creator came down in order to help us get out of that, that evil. The other point is this one. Since all reality is in God, what is manifest evil? Manifest evil is only a dream. It cannot be a reality because, because all reality has, are in God. So manifest evil is a dream. So what we do is to awake from that dream. It's not to kill the lion in the dream. If your children is screaming, he's having a nightmare, and he's screaming, Dad, I see a lion. I see a lion. The lion is coming. You're not going to kill the lion. You're going to have your children awake. So, Bumbalo was the creator is helping us to awake and not to kill the evil because evil doesn't exist. Thank you for that. I could have something to ask there, but I'm not going to go there. Uh, I know it's going to take us to a, 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 long, a much longer conversation, but it's okay. I really appreciate your explanation. Because now I'm looking at, um, in that the equation needs to be balanced, no? Because if, like you said, no, uh, we are the children of God, have been given free will. It means we have something to choose. It means we are choosing between this or that. Because if it is one, we don't have a choice. And maybe for, for God, it is important that we have a choice. Maybe that is why the evil exists, because we have a choice. So we can choose from what is good and what is bad. Anyway, I, 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 leave, that, I leave that there. Now, you did make mention of something important that is uh, very popular among Africans, which is witchcraft. Do you yes. want to say something about it? Because I can guarantee you a lot of people don't understand what it means. By witchcraft, I mean the use of evil spirits in order to harm people. Witchcraft works through domination and through charm. The witchcraft uses first to distract us from our focus on God by domination or by charm. And when we are defocused, when we have lost our focus on our focus on the divinity, then what we have to do is to suggest every thought to the victim. So we have to understand this schema in order to 
to fight witchcraft. Witchcraft acts through evil spirits. It acts through hypnotism by distracting us through domination and through charm. And then it suggests evil thoughts. And those evil thoughts affect us as diseases, adverse situations, and so on and so on. So we have to fight witchcraft. How do we fight witchcraft? The first thing I say, it is wrong to fight witchcraft by using witchcraft. This is done in some spiritual circle in Africa, in the continent, or in the diaspora. But I say to, to black people, don't anymore do this. It is a wrong practice. My ancestor, the Egyptians, didn't use that practice. I know that witchcraft can be used as a weapon of war. That is an exception, not the general rule. The general rule is love. So I'm going to give a schema in order to help people how to fight witchcraft. In order to fight witchcraft, you, have, you know how it acts. Let me repeat, it acts through evil spirits. It distracts you through domination and charm. And then it's introducing you evil thoughts. And those evil thoughts bring the evil, evil results in your life experience. So the first things we do when fighting witchcraft is to affirm that God is the only true spirit governing you and me and governing the so-called witch. For us, he is not a witch. That's why we say so-called witch. So we affirm that God is the only spirit governing him and governing us. So there is no evil spirit to control him in order for him to control us. Why we are saying this? Because we have seen that all reality is in God. And God is good. So evil doesn't exist, as we say. So there are actual, in reality, there is no evil spirits. Those evil spirits have only the power we give them in our ignorance, because all power belongs to God. So this is the first point in prayer against witchcraft. The second point, we affirm that God is the only soul, the only consciousness, the divine consciousness, which is our only consciousness, and that we cannot be distracted through domination or through charm from this consciousness, because it is God himself working in us through the logos for that focus. This is the second thing. The third thing, we have to affirm that God alone is our mind, the source of our thinking. It is God who thinks in us through the logos, through his presence in us. And that we can be receptive only to his thinking, to good thinking. And so is the so-called witch. Having done, having affirmed this, we have destroyed the fundamentals of witchcraft. So now we have to affirm, therefore, witchcraft has neither power, in, neither nor intelligence, nor substance. It is nothing. The last point, the most important point, is what we call warning. In the Kikongo, it is called loco. That is the great weapon against witchcraft. The, against, the, the, the great weapon against witchcraft is not witchcraft. No, it is love. 
through worrying. We have to pray. Father, Mother, we are addressing the prayer to, to the to the to the, 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 the Bumbaloa through our holy ancestors. So we ask them, please, you have our ancestors, open the eyes of the so-called witch that he ma he, may, he, may, he he will he must know that the evil he think he are doing to, to, to me he is doing it to himself and sin leads him right now to death so he doesn't have no other option but to quit evil this warning is based in love. It is different from what I hear from the newborn church. We cast fire on him. We cast fire on him. Maybe he, he, he destroyed. You are claiming to destroy a child of God because the witch is also a child of God. No, I don't do that. I pray to God to open his eye that he may realize that he is in the way of death. It is up to him to choose life or death. So that's what we can say about witchcraft. Don't use witchcraft to fight witchcraft. That will destroy your spiritual elevation. And you did say that uh, there are exceptions uh, when the witchcraft was used against the enemy. Am I correct on that? Against, a, against an enemy when it comes to war. I don't mean that when my brother is against me, he is a kind of enemy. I don't use witchcraft against him. No, I use the warning against him. I pray for God to open his eye to know that the evil he's doing, he's doing against himself. But when Nigeria is attacked by the enemy, the military can use witchcraft, but that is an exception. All right. Even that exception, we need to explain it. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, of course, you know what is Boko Haram, no? Uh, a kind of yeah. uh, armed uh, movement in Nigeria. Uh, many studies have shown that it was actually created by uh, some, some politicians in Nigeria against their opponent. Uh, what happened basically is that during election, they want to suppress some other persons, so they give arm to some individual to go there and start intimidating others. Uh, only that at the end of the election, the boys refused to return the weapon and they regrouped themselves. That is the beginning of an armed struggle. Now, okay, of course, not everybody want that uh, uh, struggle to continue. They want, it to, they want to put an end to it. But how do you put an end to a group of people that are armed, it becomes difficult. You have created a monster. So I am trying to understand how the witchcraft itself was created. Because now I want to believe, using Nigeria as a case study, that maybe it is beyond control of whoever has created it. I want you to speak to that. Witchcraft is just evil. Who does come evil? Evil comes from our bad use of our free will. Every evil comes from the bad, the initial bad use of the free will and the subsequent bad use of free will. That is the origin of evil. The origin of evil is not in God. The origin of evil, the origin of evil is in our own original bad use of our free will and in our own subsequent bad use of free will. Now, we are in the setting of the temporal realm where we have already created evil ourselves. And humanly speaking, we must devise ways to fight that evil. We don't use only divine means in order to fight evil. When you speak about the government, the government is a human organization. So they must, they must look for uh, devised weapons in order to fight the enemy. And among those weapons, there is witchcraft. But God doesn't know evil. Because he doesn't know evil, he doesn't know witchcraft. 
And all this scene of Boko Haram, of war, of this on that, I tell you, it is our dream. When we will away, there won't, there won't be any Boko Haram there, there won't be any war. We will find ourselves in heaven, safe and in peace. The more we exercise our divinity, we, the more we realize that peace around us right now. I used to say to my students some um, months ago, I told them, they asked me the, the question about the government. I told them, you know, there are a lot of Congos and each, each one of us abide in his own Congo. <laughs> they, they, they were kind of uh, uh, astonished. Each one abides in his own Congo. I said, okay, let me give you an example. Two people are, walk are walking. In front of them, there are policemen who, corrupt policemen who are taking money from people. And the, the first one says, says to the second, you see those policemen, they are corrupt people, and they are going to ask us money. The other said, I don't see them. I don't see only children of God. And they eventually they arrive there, the first man is arrested, the second pass away without being even questioned by the police. Both people live in the same area, but they don't, they don't live in the same mental, mental states. So each one of us live in his own Africa. I see my Africa has an Africa of peace, where people are awake to the fact that religion, their religion is a scientific one, where people are awake to the, fast, to the fact that the white people are sons of God, so they cannot practice evil and we, uh, uh, without punishment. What they do, react against themselves. My Africa is Africa of prosperity, is Africa of peace, etc. The more I maintain this Africa in my consciousness, the more I will be living that Africa around me. Thank you so much. That is powerful. I love that. I really do. All right. Now, coming back to the beginning of the conversation, which is the unification of African traditional religion. Why do you think there is a necessity to do that? From, from the 19th centuries, how ancestors like Webb Du Bois have devised what they call Pan-Africanism. They say that Africa must be united. In order to become strong, we must be united. We, we must have one army, one government and we will be powerful. And from the time, from that time, they have been looking ways to bring unity, the unity of Africa. Sheikh Antadiop, in one of his book, stresses that that unity must be first cultural. But when we look at Africa, what we see is a diversity of culture. So how to bring the unity of Africa, which is dearly sought by the politicians, which, did, which is dearly sought for the might of Africa. And we have, uh, we have, we came to the conclusion that the former unity of Africa during the Kemetic time, during the time of Egypt, was built around the religion which was scientific. So the same religion has been revealed today, thanks to the Kemetic cosmological argument, to be a science. So through that science, that exact science, we can, the, 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 the Igbo and the Bakongo and the Haitian can speak the same language, can understand that they are in the same religion, and that religion is, it, is an exact science. So there is speaking one spiritual language. And one spiritual language means a stronger unity, spiritual unity. And the spiritual unity will bring material unity. We will come to uh, Pan-Africanism as a another important conversation, but on another episode. 
for today. Yes. <laughs> I want you to tell me, how are we supposed to approach this unification of Africa from a spiritual point of view or from a religious point of view, if you want to put it like that? Yes. We have, each one of us must make a relecture of his religion through the Kemeti cosmological argument. So the Bukongo, because the Bukongo has kept the former configuration, scientific configuration. I give you, I gave you an example here. When I make a relecture of voodoo, I say witchcraft must be used as an exception for war. Witchcraft must not be used for retaliation. By doing this, I elevate the, the practice of voodoo to the practice of the scientific religion of ancient Egypt. So must do every one of us. We must reestablish the hierarchy of our divinities. We must, we must reestablish re the hierarchy. For example, if I take the Igbos of Nigeria, many will tell you that Chukwu and Chineke is the same being. But the Kemetic cosmological argument has revealed to us that the Most High is different from the Creator. So if Chukwu is the Most High, then the Creator must be Chineke, and there are two different beings. So we must make a relecture of our, of our spiritual cultures by using the it's the scientific statement of that religion, which is the Kemetic cosmological argument, and, and which is also the book of This is one uh, point. We must also know that the highest religion is the divine, which is the practice of purification, purification of thought. So we must elevate our practice of religion from the human to the divine. We must less and less use material expedient for our elevation and rely on the spiritual expedient, which is the purification of thinking. That's the way we have to do in order to bring that unity. The, the most we do this, the most also the practice that religion, because the divine practice of our religion is the practice of healing. By healing, I don't only mean healing of disease, healing of all that is inharmonious in society. So we, the more we will bring that practical import of our religion, we will eventually keep it, uh, catch the attention of the politicians and they will help in order to implement the highest practice of initiation, which was practiced in ancient Egypt. Now, what we do, even me in Zilaloa, are only the first steps. But we need the cooperation in, in order to bring higher aspects of this. And let me give you an example. The, 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 I, I have two kinds of initiation, the first and the second. The first one in, introduces people to the world of the, of the initiate. And the second one, people, people become initiators. For that one, I, I did I did it in my house and it took people one month to be initiated. But in the ancestral practice, they were spending nine months in the forest. Believe me, to do that, you need the cooperation of the states. This is where we are today in Africa in 2022. But African traditional uh, spirit, uh, form of spirituality is not even regarded in many of the cases they are simply looked upon as witchcraft. Um, so with the presence of Islam and Christianity, which are the two religions that are dominating Africa as we currently speak, how are we able to uh, succeed in this unification of African religion 
without what do you what do we intend to do with these two um, dominant religious system which of course came to Africa through domination and control of African people of course many people don't know that this had be these are the instruments that are being used against them so how do we manage in this situation we have to capitalize on the weak point of those two religions all of them three Judaism, Hylam, and Christianity. We have to capitalize on their weak points. Their weak points are this one. First, first, first of all, their religion is only a belief. That is how religion is defined in the Western dictionary. And that's how religion is conceived in the West. It is a belief, a set of beliefs to which people cling with faith. We have to capitalize on that because ours is a scientific religion, an exact science. So it is superior. Belief, science is superior to belief. So you have, we have to awake to that scientific nature of our religion. Second thing, we have to capitalize on the fact that their concept of God implies a non-existent God. The, high, the most high creator doesn't exist. And we can prove this. We have, I have proved, proved, proved this through the Kemeti cosmological argument. And we have to stand on this and show to them that ours is a superior kind of theism and yours is a lower one. We have also, because when people, when, when the, those white folks look at our culture, they try all the best to de de depict that culture has been akin to witchcraft. So we must do our best to quit using witchcraft as a means of retaliation. Witchcraft must be sought by law. But let me add something on the epistemological level. There is something to be done also on the epistemological level, our conception of knowledge. Knowledge in the West, the science of the West, is based on a belief, not on a truth. It is based on the belief that reality is material. Now, not a single scholar in Europe in America or elsewhere can prove to you that reality is material. They only assume that it is material. But thanks to the cosmological argument, Kemeti cosmological argument, I have proven, we can prove that reality is spiritual. Now, in most, in when the white people arrived here in Africa, we had a superiority in them in many areas. For example, in the area of surgery, we knew how to practice surgery without without suffering. We knew how to open the skull. We knew how to practice cesarean and and take away the baby, and we knew how to pull the the the. the the, the, the aching tooth without suffering, we knew all that. But the problem is that our science, our technology are based on the truth that reality is spiritual. It is based on the existence of the spirits. We didn't have the means to defend that. Today we have that means. Today we have the Kemeti cosmological argument. So we have to do what the Chinese did. The Chinese went to the WHO, the World Health Organization, and they said to them, acupuncture is our medicine. It is provable through our anatomy. And today, the WHO has admitted that medicine for more than, more than 50 kind of disease. We have to do the same for our technology. And Tell to the who how our science is based on the demonstrable truth that reality is spiritual. You say that reality is material. Can you prove this? They cannot prove that. And because they cannot prove, they cannot stop us from, by saying that it is not scientific. Ours 
is more scientific than the our technology is more scientific than the technology. Thank you for that. Those are deep thoughts. Now, what would be your final thought here in this conversation? At least for this episode, that we are going to have another another conversation next time. What would be your final thought here today? My final thought is this one. In the ancient world, the Egyptian, the Nubian, the Ethiopian, they were spiritually united as one. Whenever trouble happens in Egypt, the Ethiopian army will go and reestablish order. They did it with Akhenaten. They did it many times. They were one spiritually. Unity of spiritual unit was where their strength. Within Egypt, there were many schools of spirituality, many theologies that they were seen as complementary. So inwards, there was also a unity. That unity of yesterday's time should awake us to work for the unity of today. This is possible because in its original trend, African traditional religion is an exact science. We have proven this. We have the tool to prove this. We have a religion that has kept that scientific configuration. It is the Congo religion, the Congo. So please, let us make a relecture of our different trends, of the different trends of that religion in order to bring our unity around the notion of the scientific nature of our religious existence. Thanks so much. We have to work for the unity of Africa, and the unity of Africa must be, first of all, a spiritual unity. I thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sir. I really appreciate the conversation. I learned a lot of things uh, from you today. And like I said, this is not the end. This is just one part of it. Thank you so yes. much, sir. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm ready. If you want to meet me, I'm ready any, anytime you want. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Overhead Podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehe Ewafo. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you in the next episode.